yes they will It'll be a thrill Grandpa and chill, grandson and friends Grandpa and chill in full effect We talk about it all, yeah put it all on the set With that pet craze too We chillin' with Rosie Come through, stay tuned, yeah listen closely Cause this the millennials and the silent generation Coming together, discussion in rotation This is Grandpa and chill I'm Brandon Fox. You're on another episode of Grandpa and Chill. I'm here with my amazing co-host, as always, Finest Jackson, my grandfather, he's pretty good, and uh, our amazing producer, Sierra. Today, our guest is... Hugh Massey. Hey, Hugh. Very uh, happy to have you on. I know you just gave this spiel to everybody, but could you uh, do it one more time for our audience? Yes, yeah, so Brandon, one, one I'm... Gr- I'm uh... Very pleased to be here with you guys tonight. And the business I have is DNA Behavior International. <laughs> and you can tell from my accent, I came a long way to do this podcast tonight, all the way from Sydney, Australia, where I was born. But uh, wow. it's been a 20-year journey to to Atlanta, Georgia, the United States, to pursue my passion in life, which is to help... Uh, uh, people become more behaviorally uh, conscious um, and money conscious as well. So, um, you know, I'm raising consciousness on about behavior and, and money and, and particularly how people build, Brandon, a better relationship to money by addressing their behavior. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are very uh, emotional, right? They're very, uh, yeah. Yeah, they're very emotional uh, with money. And I think the reality is most people don't understand what money is fully. And money has a number of uh, components or dimensions to it. You know, one, it's a currency. It's something that we all need to uh, to have in our lives to, uh, you know, spend, invest, give, earn, that's that's money as a currency, but it's also a mind. It's also about our mindset. It's in our brain. Uh, it's related to our perspectives on life, but it's also in our energy fields. Money is so somewhat always omnipresent. You know, it it it's directly or indirectly in every conversation, in every thought. And I think that's uh, that's the big issue for a lot of people that causes stress. Yeah, just. Uh, no, you go, Grandpa. Actually, where are you going to start? I was just going to say it's the medium of exchange, and you know, there's been different types of medium of exchanges over over the years and in different countries. Yeah. Um, you know, and one time I think what was it tulips were considered the medium exchange, and uh, and then they've they've tried um, uh, things bartering, and I don't think that's worked out so well, but. There was, I remember, like 10, 20 years ago or maybe longer, a uh, big deal about bartering. I haven't heard much about that recently. Yeah, and cryptocurrencies in there now, you know, and what what becomes a replacement currency, we don't know. There, there, may, well be, there may well be something because there's so much debt that's out there. Uh, we may get a seismic economic event yet, I think, in our, in our lifetimes to deal with which could, could change a lot of things. The, the amount of debt that the United States owes is, is just astronomical. It's around $30 trillion. It, you know, the, the, the debt plus the Fed owes like another, I think it's seven, eight, nine trillion dollars trillion. You're talking about the, the interest on that, on that money, especially with interest, it keeps being pushed up by the Fed, is just enormous. Uh, half of what you're going to, paying taxes is going to end up just paying the interest debt. Yeah, and and I think that's a it's a major structural issue that we seem to keep putting um a band-aid over and wiping it wiping it under the carpet or wiping it away and not addressing and should have been dre- addressed a long time ago and we probably wouldn't have the problem we're probably going to face if if it had been. Well, Part of the problem is uh, it's not 
the only problem. There's a lot of problems. But part of the problem is that uh, because of COVID, uh, the U.S. borrowed a lot of money to help society, you know, regain its uh, its footing. And, um, and, and, and it's been compared to a war, the, the COVID situation. And back when we had the Second World War, uh, it, uh, taxes went up as high as 91% on the wealthiest people in the country. Yep. Now, they don't pay the 91 on all of it. They pay it on, paid it on a certain amount over, let's say, 200000 a year. But now, the uh, I won't say which party, but, but they actually lower taxes for the wealthiest people instead of raising them when they really needed to. And nothing is changing in, in as far as that situation right now. So, so we're we're strapped, it, and and it's all going to fall back on on the middle class. I th- I believe on, you know, over over the years, it's a tremendous amount of debt right now. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of debt. There's a lot of problems. I think when you look at the the lower levels, people don't have enough money um, with such low savings rates, and then you look at the the other side, there's people with a lot of money and they've got other sets of problems um, as well. So they're not, and, and yeah, so it's a very interesting scenario we're in. Let me, let me ask you, Hugh, uh, your uh, company or organization or background, like you focus on the relationship of people with money, but just so our audience knows, is it like... Um, you have teachers that work there. Like, what is like the actual setup that you have? You know. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's a good question. So, from a practical standpoint, uh, if you went to our website at dnabehavior dot com, you would see that there is that we have technology solutions. So we have uh, like a behavioral discovery process that people can go through to learn about themselves, not only in terms of their identity, but also in terms of how they deal with money and make decisions. And that's, that's through a structured scientific uh, discovery process that we have. People can take, uh, do a trial uh, there uh, on the website. Not all the information about you is going to be made available then because part of it, I suppose, come, which comes to your second question, Brandon, is around, um, you know, the consulting and coaching part. But we have a range, we, we have uh, a lot of financial advisors, for instance, and business coaches, life coaches that have been trained in our systems that help people navigate these paths. Um, and then we have a lot of educational information as well. So that's that's how the business uh, the business works, and I tend to train the other coaches and advisors in in understanding all of this. I don't I don't work with all the uh, the mums and dads and families out there because I can't. I'm only one person to do that, but we have a whole team that helps. Is your um, clientele is it primarily like you just said families, or is it small businesses, large corporations, like? Who does your company serve? We have from uh, large corporations right down to a small business. Got you. And uh, as our client, what would, and, and we yeah. have some uh, we have some family clients, but we are not a. For example, we're not a retail financial planning firm that deals with the investor directly. Mm-hmm. The, the retail financial planning firm is our client. Who uses our software technology? Their our ideas to help their clients more. Uh, you're not selling annuities, are you? No, we don't sell any financial product. We are selling uh, human behavioral information about how people behave. That's the only thing we do. And I did have originally. I had a wealth management business in Australia, and I was a CPA. But I don't do any of that now. I I, I am totally on the behavior on the human behavior part and trying to get the human impacts uh, through our technology in other words trying to help people through our technology and, and what was that journey for you from uh, being a CPA or I, I imagine that might have been your undergrad or like um, to sort of be- yeah so my undergraduate degree was as a I did uh, commerce 
counting economics. <coughs> then I became a CPA and I did that for about 10 years and I was a tax specialist. Mm. And and in that in doing that, I saw how people behaved and I learned to work with that, with, with the different clients because in a way tax is related to money. No one wants to pay tax, but people get emotional about it. Um, people don't always understand it and people get in over their heads, you know, not wanting to pay tax and trying to avoid it. It's almost like running up a big debt bill, you know. Um, so so I got used to dealing with people, their behavior, emotions in that arena. And then I set up a wealth management business because I was sick of the corporate world. It just wasn't going to work for me. I was more entrepreneurial. I was always doing something on the side, you know, in terms of investing or getting into something. So I had to make a, I had to make a decision one day uh, that was self-imposed, not firm imposed. <laughs> I set up the wealth management business and again in there, I started to see how people would say one thing to me in a meeting and they would go and do something else differently or behave differently when they were under pressure a few months later or even two years later sometimes. And I thought, okay, there's something going on here that I need to understand. And a friend asked me one day, she asked me, Hugh, what are you really passionate about? And I just came out of my subconscious. I want to help people all over the world become self-empowered through greater uh, behavioral and money consciousness. Now, I, I hadn't written that down like that, been trying to come up with something like that. It just came out. And I was aware enough at the age of 34 when I said that, that something needs to be done. I need to go and do something about it. So I did. And that's why, you know, 20 years later, I'm talking to you guys, right? Um, and I think that's the, that's the big thing in terms of creating wealth in your life is to find something is to, that you're passionate about, that you can do, that you love, and have the courage to go and do it. And to, to realize that in life, there's no limitations, any limitations in your head. And you can remove that. Are you? And that's that to me is that's what really creates the wealth. And you, you know the relationship to money is all tied up in that too. In that you know if you hang if you limit your life by saying, "Well, gee, I can't do this because, um, you know, I I want to go and do X tomorrow, or I'm worried about my savings," it won't happen. You know, you've got to unblock yourself at every at every level and go and, 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 uh, and have a go. And I think, yes, failure is always in anybody's head when you're doing it, but you, you need to think, well, the journey is going to take me somewhere, somewhere and I'm going to learn from it and I'm going to grow. And that's why I came to America because I knew not only because I could get the scientific validation for what I, I, I came up, the idea I had, was also the way of thinking in this country is more accepting that, you know, if you fail or screw up with something, you got to move, you can move on to another place and grow and excel. Whereas in somewhere like Australia, it's a lot more negative in that sense. You, you know, if something doesn't, if one venture doesn't work out, you're basically written off. Right. Really? Um, wow. It's not the same mentality. Um, as, as maybe in this country for taking a risk and having a go. And so that's why I'm here. Uh, you know, one of the big reasons why I'm here. Well, entrepreneurial uh, wise, um, I'm assuming, I, I don't really know the, the statistics, but I'm assuming that a lot more uh, businesses fail than, than make a success or they make a very, minor success most of them yeah the statistics so, are huge for businesses failing and i suppose one of the good things is i never researched any of that when i went to uh to start my business because if i if i'd looked at the statistics and and if i knew how hard it was going to be i may not have done it you know uh it's easy to sit here and say to you guys yes i would right but i may not have i think that what I did do in Sydney, Australia, in Sydney, Australia, is 
I looked at myself and how I was wired and what my resilience levels were, and I knew that I was very much on the end of the spectrum where I, if, if, that I would be able to handle it emotionally. And so I said, okay, I'll go on the journey. I'll risk everything I've got and, and, and go and find out. And, it's, and, and, that, and that, I think that's a lot of what I call an ex, what I call today having an exponential growth mindset. You know, you can go in, in life with a linear progression at a few percent on each year or you decide to make a quantum leap somewhere. And that's what Hugh does. You need to know when to hold and when, when to fold. I mean, you can't, yep. you know, you can put good money at the bad too. No, you've got to be very careful with that. And you've got to, uh, you can have a big dream, but it doesn't mean that you start big. I, I actually think you start small. And you've got to be in there for the long term. And, and yes, you've got to be very careful. You've got to know when to speed it up, when to slow it down. You've got to know when things are running in your favor. You've got to know, I think, which people... Uh, to back along the way, whether that's an employee or uh, community groups that you become part of, where's the right energy? It's, you know, knowing how to build those relationships and, and with who is really important to, 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 to success. And it doesn't always, you know, people look at sort of the success, success overnight stories. It doesn't always happen that way. You can be 20 years in the making and suddenly within a two-year period, you make that leap. Everybody's different. Every business is different. Timing, not all in your it. It, you know, you, you can you can you can have a product ahead of your time. I think, and sometimes you've got to wait it out. There's a lot of factors involved, but you've got to have you've got to be mentally strong yeah. to do it. There's no doubt about well, that. <clears throat> um, that's really cool stuff. Um, you, uh, I, got, I yeah, I have a lot of comments and questions. Uh. Really, I guess the thing that's been sticking in my head the most uh, when you were saying like money being a part of your whole being, um, but and I want to get to that. I definitely want to get to that. But I, I really like how you're going at, at dealing with money in general. And I, I'll say I'm one of the biggest like haters of capitalism or money and blah 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 blah. But I, I really enjoy what you're doing with this. When it, you're really it sounds like you're focusing on how humans behave with with money not so much that money is a it's really like how you've noticed like i don't know just how we behave with it how we like cut corners or or try to like uh you know do do these normal things so i like looking at it like that when it's like yeah, yeah just to see what you can do what else is, i thought was cool um also like tell me if i'm wrong here though too is like so your web your website would it help people under, understand what's the appropriate risk by understanding their behavior? Because if they have your behavior or have your, your behavior with money and understanding of it, then it is worth, then maybe I'm assuming that your coaches and stuff would be like, you you should take the risk. But if someone's behavior is different with money, you would coach them in a, in a different way. Is that kind of like what you're doing? I, I that's, that's absolutely right. And, and we did a research study about six years ago on 500 very successful entrepreneurs um, at varying levels. And there's very, there, there are five very common traits, fine. And, you know, you need to fall in within those if you're going to go and start a business from scratch and, 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 and go for it for the long term. But you, that, that's the behaviours. You also need to have a very deep passion and a purpose for it. Um, now, if you don't have those behaviours, then you certainly, but you might have the idea, you need to find a partner to go with you on the journey that's, that would have that, have that style to make up what you don't have. Um, but, but generally, you're, what, everything you just said is, is, is right. You've got to be wired for it. I knew I was wired to do it. It's a matter of then, do I want to do it and do I want to climb to the top? And... Um, you know, you've, you can get close sometimes and then you have to stop and then you've got to sort of figure out another way around the, uh, another way up the mountain and go and do it. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's part of it. You've got to be How prepared about to cell sacrifice phone something, I think, too. 
How about cell phone cases out of uh, kangaroo skin? Is that a are good? You, is that a good idea? About it, Grandpa? I don't know. It's not one well, that I would. There's the answer. I would try. <laughs> not really, no. No, but someone once presented the idea to me. Yeah, I, I think you've got to be deeply passionate about it. It's not. It it it's it's a passion for a cause, not just the solution. If does that make sense? So my cause is money consciousness. You know, and. and in a way, I've always, since I was a little boy, wanted to understand money. And it wasn't always about uh, just investing it. I think it's, it is it is what can be done with it is what I'm interested in. And how it impacts people's lives and makes them better. I think it should be real knowledgeable about what you're getting into. Real knowledgeable about, you know, if you're going to be a, yeah. In the music business, you should be real knowledgeable about what you're doing, the tech, technology or whatever you need to know. Um, yeah, and knowledgeable about so, the market that you're going uh, into. Not to be so much of a, a killjoy, but I it think just that's kinda, wrong. Just thinking about this and writing notes too had me thinking about like when I, when you guys are talking about the debt and the go, you know, and all that stuff and how deep in debt we are and all this all this uh, other jazz and understanding what money is in general, which I was like, I really don't understand what money is. It, it really makes me think of the global crisis, like in climate change, where this is like, I know we're deep in, I know we're deep in some shit. I just don't know what's going on. Um, do you find that that is a behavioral thing? Because it seems like same thing with like money with me. It's like, I, I, or I don't know if I'm the only person, but I'm, I would think that the existential dread of this seems bigger than me, we're seem doomed type of thing. Do you find that as a, as a, a normal behavior or is that just uh me <laughs> no. Uh, no i think that it's a, it's a it's a normal behavior and we and we all have we all have doses of that and i think it's part of being curious maybe being a bit skeptical and you're being a little bit honest and having a look behind uh or underneath the hood of what's going on and asking questions, whereas others don't do that. So I don't think there's anything abnormal about fine what you just said. I think that's quite normal. Um, but now, each of us as humans might worry about some of these issues differently, um, you know, than others. I, I, I don't lie awake worrying about climate change, but I think it's a big issue. Definitely. And, 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 and it may be a lot more than I think it is. I mean, I think it is an enormous issue. I think there are other issues that come with it too. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, but I, I like what you said earlier too. I think when grandpa was giving you like his, um, like the king or um, all the business that fail, uh, I, I think though it's like sometimes the ignorance of it all is kind of good too. But I, I say that too, because then it goes back to this question of, but then you're trying to teach people about money and to understand money would me understanding money make is it better if i just go in there going like i'm gonna make it in 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 this in i i think money is money is a different topic because it it is it's an energy field that's directly in your life um and i would argue it's as much in your life as food exercise um your mental condition which are your primary energy sources and money, there's a lot of research on it now, is the number one cause of stress. And stress is what causes us to, uh, to age quicker, which brings on disease. So if you think of it like that, money is a major uh, direct cause on our, on our being as a, as a human. And therefore, I would encourage everybody to learn about it. That doesn't mean that you have to go and make tons of it. You don't need tons of money to be happy. You need enough to be happy. And there's research studies on that from the World Happiness Institute. But you don't need any more than that. And I think it, it, it gets in, you know, people who make a lot of money. I know a lot of entrepreneurs who make quite a lot of money. And then they're worried about comparing themselves to their friend next door and what cars have you got? What houses and whatnot? And I think people forget the basics of life, and you don't need all that shit to be happy. You can, you can, 
you can, um, I, I, I would say that I had a lot of things when I was in Australia at a young age. And I came to America and I didn't have all those things and I let a, let, have led a far simpler life and I've been far happier with having less shit, um, basically. And I don't worry about what somebody else has and I don't go telling anybody else what I have. I just worry about how I can impact other people. Um, you know, and it's being sensible within that. I've got to feed a family and all those things as well. But just, I think is everyone... You... I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say this is this is what the DNA behavior.com is, is about, essentially, is to understand that. Because uh, now you're tying in with my big question was in the very beginning of it was what energy and, and money and, and now I'm starting to see a better, clearer picture of what you're saying. And, and, yeah, and uh, it, so it's tied into stress, happiness, success, mm -hmm. and the key is your identity and, and, and what gives you meaning in life. When you have those things sorted out, you can build the right relationship to money about what role money is going to play in your life. And it's not that hard when you've done that. And to think that money is going to solve all your problems. Everyone, everyone has problems, uh, well, rich or poor. And uh, so, you know, I've known people that are pretty well-to-do people and didn't know how many, how many problems they had personal. It could be health. It could be many things, family issues, whatever. So Yeah, and, 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 you know, you look at, you know, I'm around probably a lot of entrepreneurs particularly and, People, people look at the the other guy or girl across the across the way, and they think, "Gee, how lucky they are!" And they've done so well, and they've got so much money. But then you don't know the misery that's there uh, potentially for them or their spouse, uh, or they've got a child with some problem, you know, because they weren't around as parents or whatever it is. Is the, the comp or, or people just judging them all the time? You know, there's 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 a million things. And, and so, therefore, at that level, money doesn't make you happy. But having enough of it to feed yourself and have some life experiences does. You know, and there's a balance. You know, you want to have your life in equilibrium at the end of the day. So you need enough money for that. But otherwise, beyond that, you don't. That's really the challenge for people is to get, what that, to get that right and understand that. What say you, Brandon? Oh, well, I have a lot. Uh, one is, uh, I was just thinking about uh, your series of small businesses, Grandpa, Grandpa Pretzel Cone, and all, all different kinds of uh, businesses in his life. Um, I was curious, Hugh, especially with your two different perspectives of Australia and then the US, your views on capitalism. Uh, there was one other thing I was thinking about. Um, oh, yeah, uh, just because we're a generational podcast. Um, like, I feel like a lot of millennials or um, even maybe Gen Z, we always have a joke of like, oh, yeah, you know, like in, in the 80s, you know, you could buy a house for $10 and on minimum wage, you could have three cars and feed all the kids, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I do want to get into sort of that, uh, generational gap there too, but I just threw a lot at you. Let's start with grandpa. You had a lot of small businesses. <laughs> yeah. And I've been successful in, in one or two and, and not successful in one or two. So I've had both experiences and, uh, I, I think you really have to keep your eyes open and, and realize when, uh, you know, when, you don't want to when you have to fold when you you stop supporting a, a business with financially and with your with your mind or when you think that you know you should keep trying to to make it i've done very well in one or two businesses and not so well in others so you know it's... yeah and that's a very hard decision to make i think um right very hard decision to make <laughs> But uh, I guess we all depend on other people. And if you're running a business or whatever, a lot has to do with uh, having the right employees as well. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. And, and I've been lucky with the, with the DNA behavior business. I've got people that have been there with me from the start. Um, some others have been there 10, 12 years. And even the, uh, you know, the support teams have been there a long time too. So I'm lucky that I've got, 
a, a lot of stability in that sense around me. Hugh, what uh, what made you decide to move to the to the states? I, I, I think it was twofold. One, it was it was what I was saying to you before in terms of the attitudes in this country and the culture towards work entrepreneurship means it's a much more open country in that sense. So I always knew that if I had the right thing and worked hard, played the game the right way, that I would succeed here and I would be fulfilled. Secondly, uh, when that was first, I knew, I knew that I was going to probably come to America at some point in my life quite a way ahead of when I started to. And, 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 and then Secondly, when the idea came up around human behavior and I hired a uh, organizational psychologist to work in my wealth management business to help me with it, she pointed me to uh, people here in Atlanta uh, that would be able to help me with the, with the uh, development of the systems, the, the, what we would call the psychometrics or the science, just to keep it simple, to put the, uh, the rigor into it to prove it. And so I came over 40 times in four years. Wow. <laughs> to That's expensive. To work with them, to oversee it. And then that's really when I decided, I, I bought a house uh, in Dunwoody here in, 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 um, in Atlanta. And I, and I uh, sort of put down some roots and stayed basically. I, I don't, and I've, you know, eventually got married, um, got my wife and kids and yeah, I'm here. I'm a citizen too. You've been here, you say, twenty years. Yeah, uh, that journey started twenty years ago, but the full-on living is probably sixteen, seventeen years of it. Wow! Congrats. With a lot of commuting in in in, in the middle. <laughs> I I lived in in Atlanta, and uh, it's a great city. I, I think Perfect it's a very city, yeah. gen, as far as America goes, it's a very good living city. Yes, it is. Yes. Um, like this side personal question before I get into some of the, like the aha moments I was uh, get into, but how's your family uh, think about you coming over here, doing your doing what you're doing? Is it is it pretty? Uh, is it good bad? Um, I think that my mother is is entrepreneurial in her own right, and she was from England and went to Australia when she married my father. Um. So while she would rather I was in Sydney, I think any mother would. She gets why I'm here and that I'm doing something. I'm doing something good in the world, and I think you know she's she's proud of that. So that's good, and we've had you know fairly good contact because she she until recently, until up till COVID, would come over to America to see us, or we would meet us somewhere this year, and, and we've gone down to Australia. This year, the family we all got we're going down to Sydney because she's ninety two now, and it's not as easy for her to travel. Um, so, so from from that perspective, she's fine. I've got a younger brother. I I don't. Um, I think I don't. I don't think John's totally um, always understood all of what I do or why I do it. Um, did I need to? I think he's queried. Did I? You know, would have queried. Did I need to come to America and do this? No, I didn't need to do it at all. I did need to do it in the sense of I didn't need to do it financially, but I needed to do it for myself to evolve as a human being and to, to realize my fullest potential, whatever that is. And that would not have happened in Australia. And that was a driver of me coming here. It would not have happened. Kind of off the subject a little bit. Brandon's great grandfather always talked about moving, and he was very successful, but he always talked about moving to Australia. He wanted to move to Australia. Well, you can't blame anyone for wanting to move there because the the, the climate's good. Everything's there. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a friendly place in its own right from a lifestyle point of view. And, and, and they they've come out on, I do some recording, uh, music recording and, uh, there's, there's equipment companies in Australia that are making terrific equipment. Australia has a lot of very good innovation. 
in a lot of areas. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of good things that come out of there, including me. <laughs> but, but Brandon, you had some heavy hitting questions or, or, or uh, yeah. yeah, well, Grand I, Power, I just you wanted to start on the first questions. one, but uh, I guess the second Am one... I a capitalist? Yeah, yeah, you're... <laughs> I would assume yes, but <laughs> no, I, 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 I am, I am a capitalist. I, I don't necessarily want to go down the the politics path because I think that I don't think the listeners need need to hear that or for us to get polarizing. Um, and I don't know. I fully understand all the politics in America because there, it, it, and and it's far more than economic. I think in, when you get to that, but generally speaking, yes, I am a capitalist. I guess, but but I but yeah. I, not a not a socially unconscious one though, if that makes sense. I I think a a, a better or more fair way to phrase the question is um, a, a lot of what you do is about the behavior of money, right? Um, and so I'm curious, like where sort of uh, when you're having these conversations or in the psychology, like where the sort of uh, generational wealth fits in and sort of the the um, systematic trauma in like the uh, emotions and relationship to that money you know how you how you go about that in your business so we we do do quite a lot of work within families about you know let's say mum or dad have inherited a lot of money or made a lot of money and it's now going to be passed on in, in working with then mum and dad about what are they going to do with it. And I think the big issue is the impact of that on the children. The children didn't get born choosing to have that money. Um, and, 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 and in actual fact, I think it's a big burden on a lot of them. You know, to inherit money or to know you're going to inherit money creates a lot of expectations in how you're supposed to behave, shape up in the world. And not everybody's cut out for that. And I, I, I actually think if there's a lot of people out there, if they were really honest with themselves who are inheritors or going to be inheritors, many would rather not have it. Um, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, I want, I want, to, I want to get millions of dollars uh, so I don't have to go to work. But for a lot of people, that's also crippling mentally um, and, and, and is quite problematic because they don't know what to do with it. So... You know, the intergenerational issues are huge in in uh, in, in how mo the money is dealt with. You know, I certainly think it's great if kids can get a, a, an, an education because their parents have got the money to help them with it. I mean, I don't think in this country you want to be saddled with um, student debt. You know, so I think there there are things that money's got a really good purpose for and can be handled well in the family, but. There are kids out there that just don't go that 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 uh, uh, sort of in a way it's a life punishment or if not, you know, I've often talked about uh, it's a ghetto. You're a prisoner. You're a prisoner to the money. It's like the old wives' tale of um, like ninety percent of uh, lottery winners lose it all in like five years or something like that, right? Like yep, because they don't know what to do with it and they have an emotional rush and they go and spend it and they don't have any purpose. Um, and they go and buy a boat and expensive house and do some dud deals and bang, it's all gone. And it's the same. I, I know some very smart people that have sold businesses and made a lot of money. It, and it's amazing. Within three years, they've lost half of it. Yeah. Do you, you know Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that book? Yeah. Is it, are, are those philosophies that I guess your business subscribes to is sort of like uh, money is there as an investment, not as, you know, like all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I, I subscribed, you know, to, to all of that. I think money, uh, probably more, and more than that, I think money is there for life experiences. Um, but I think the, mo the most important thing you've got to find is what is going to create meaning for you in your life and the money and, and what you do with the money after that is is not such a hard thing to, to figure out. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's been in the news a lot. Uh, Bill and, uh, and uh, what is it, Linda Gates, Melinda Gates, have said that they're not going to uh, give 
uh, a lot of their money to their children. They're going to give it mostly to charity if they're being genuine. Who knows, you know, but... but Yeah, uh, and, and then Buffett's yeah. like that. A, lot, a number of entrepreneurs are like that. Um, I, I think it's good if there's a family conversation around it, though. I, I think that one of the... If it's just a unilateral decision of the parents, yes, it's their money. They can do what they like with it, technically speaking, but they are impacting their kids with it. So I, I believe in having a family conversation about what that decision will be and everybody buy into that is important. Yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, Trump in inherited a lot of money and look how great he's done. Yeah. I'm not being serious. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that one's a can of worms, isn't it? <laughs> What about uh, and, and what about the Elon, third que the um, generational question that I had about sort of finance and I or a lot of people my age we joke about how easy it was to you know in the eighties you could make minimum wage and spend ten dollars on a house and uh, it's just not the same uh, I uh, you know it's not the same economic landscape and it, it you know um, I feel like my generation a lot feels like they got pretty screwed in that regard. Yeah, because everything is more expensive. So, you know, to own a house, you are going to have to get a genuine job and, and it's not easy. I think the same sits there in Australia. To buy to buy a home is near impossible for kids without some parental support. Um, and I think that those issues are here in this country. It probably depends on which city you live in as well. Um, Atlanta probably is not out of reach yet. Um, San Francisco or New York or anywhere in the Northeast, California is pretty much out of reach without, without, without the help. So you're right. And you then become a prisoner to, prisoner to debt and um, you start making choices. You know, you're in the debt trap. You start making choices for your life that don't really make you happy. That's the problem. Because of the mortgage and all that stuff? Yeah, because of the mortgage, I think the job market's different too now too, Brandon. Um, you know, in the 1980s, you could start a job and, and be in the same company probably almost for life. Uh, certainly in the 70s, 60s, that was true, 80s probably. Nowadays, it's not like that. And and so the, the, the job security is not the same. Uh, you've got to be far more flexible and nimble of what you will accept. So the world, the world, the world is different. But also, I would say the other flip side of it is that a lot of kids today have grown up with a lot of with a lot more things given to them, a lot more toys available. Some would say, I'm not saying every kid, but quite a lot have been spoiled and haven't had to go and earn it, you know, um, or be made to work as hard. You know, I, I think that when I got a job first got a job in 1986 I was very careful how I behaved at work I worked very hard because you couldn't you couldn't really afford to get fired whereas today you know up till recently it's been an employee market don't like the environment you go to the, go next door and get a, a job um, but there's a lot more things to spend money on today you know yeah, I mean, I, I, I will say, uh, in fairness to that point, that the, the access to information is probably a lot easier, right? Like, you, you can get an entire college education on YouTube, and it's probably a lot better than some places. Um, yeah, there's sure. far more choices. And, um, and I think that a lot of people will find entrepreneurship of some level will be their life and career or the gig economy. You know, you get yourself trained up with some skills, um, some things you like, and you'll work flexi time and you'll do projects. Yeah, but I would, I would, and and, yeah. and, and frankly, that's not a bad life. Sure. It's but again, it's a mindset. Is that what you want to do? I, I think it's not a bad life for people. I think a lot of retirees who've had a corporate job will go need to go and do that too. You know, I think we, we're all going to live longer. And what are you going to do? Do nothing for seventy years? I don't think so. And the problem is that the people probably that need help the most are going to be the ones that aren't even going to 
be aware of, you know, the things that you're teaching. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, and maybe I'm wrong, that a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago, there the, were the rich and the poor, and it'll be the same way a hundred or a thousand years from now. There's just people that are going to get I'm, ahead. I'm curious life what you're thinking you about right now, fine. Yeah, yeah I, 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 look, I think that there's some level of this conversation that's quite high level, and it's perhaps for the it's perhaps for the very educated. I, I, I get that. But I've got people out there, you know, in our, you know, business ecosystem who are who are part of our company, uh, who are out there um, teaching um, kids, families at, at at in the schools, uh, you know, in, in minority environments. These principles. So we are starting to get it down, but it's going to take a lot of years. But yeah. but 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 we're working on it. I think that's the challenge. That's the mountain to be to be conquered. Um. And the media portrays like you know the big big successes of people, and it gives them like a, a un, not a realistic view on 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 life in some respects. Yeah, you know the the superstar athlete or the super. Uh, entertainer or whatever and you know that, that makes a hundred million dollars and you know they don't really get a realistic view of 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 what life is no the media is a big problem yeah absolutely so uh tell me this uh maybe it's an unfair question for me to ask what is the view of a person like yourself from australia you may not want to answer this because you're a u.s citizen now coming from australia but of our situation, the U.S. Uh, regarding with China. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I think it's. I think it's problematic. I think the world's going. It's going. It's, it's going to lead to some higher level of isolationism. I think we went through a generation where the world was extremely interconnected for everything. You know. Uh, an idea could be generated in America. It could be made in China, sent back, sold. Uh, China has some very valuable resources that might be needed for the future for a lot of tech products. Um, so China has a lot of control in many ways. But I don't know that America can put all of its uh, uh, eggs in that basket, or anybody can. But you know, China is now a very powerful country. And, and America is not is not the strength it was, and so can't just call the shots. So we have a different equilibrium. Um, and China, as so Japan and India, also make for uh, interesting cases to to understand here as well. You know, Japan is, even though its economy has been flatter for a while, it is, they've got their tentacles everywhere. And now India, you know, is the most populous country in the world. It's quite well developed. It's got a good legal uh, legal system, uh, which does help business. And it's growing a lot, you know, so I think that the, the, the dynamics are very different. And Europe is in decline, and certainly England is. Well, it, it seems to me that, that uh, Americans gained a lot uh, by being able to buy products at a very, very reasonable price. Now, I understand that the U.S. government is concerned about China developing military-type things that, uh, you know, having certain chips and whatever available to them. But aside from that, I'm talking about the guy that goes into Walmart or Target or whatever could buy goods that now, with inflation, are becoming much, much more expensive. And uh, and so we 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 got a value, a great value, uh, for the for the dollars that that we sent over to China, uh, in terms of you know what what the consumer uh, could purchase. Uh, now we're making absolute enemies of them. India, it appears to me, maybe I'm wrong, but it looks to me like India, and um, and uh, Russia, and who knows who else seem to be somewhat siding with China. Now, I don't know if I'm yeah. right about that, but but that's the impression that I have. So we're so we're kind of isolating ourselves from the world except for 
England and Germany and I, I Australia and Canada and you know we've already made enemies of most of South America and Central America uh, you know so and, and the only thing for America is America could America could be self-sustaining itself. It doesn't really need the rest of the world if it if it, if it gets to that. Uh, it's, you know, it's big enough. It's got enough resources. Uh, is that a good thing? Not completely, but but at the same time, America going and uh, propping up a lot of countries, all the uh, um, you know investments and whatnot made overseas that that amount to nothing are a drain on America and, you know, look where our education system is, you know, why, why, why shouldn't more be invested in that? And it's lousy. We're yep. way down. Why do we We're need to as... invest as much in military when it could be in education, uh, into our own industries and things here. And I think that's, that's something that I think needs a lot of consideration. We're low on the totem pole in terms of health care, in terms of longevity. Yep. Uh, we used to be at the top and now we're really, down very very low in terms of other industrialized countries. So healthcare is a very definitely... scary thing, I think, in this country. Um, what is healthcare? Yeah, did you say yeah? Because the cost structure of it is just way out of line, and I don't really understand how it's got there. But you know, there's some game with the with the ph big pharma and the insurance companies and the doctors, medical profession that it doesn't work, and and it it's it costs too much. Um, and at the end of the day, the government's got to, you know, got to pay a lot. I mean, it's a big part of GDP, and and the health issues are huge in this country. Yeah, finest, you're going to say something in a couple of minutes. I'm just curious. What? Oh, you know me. You I'm got a whole list. Yeah, um, you always got a whole list. Got a whole list. Um, mainly, though, I guess the the big one is. I think we're missing a point of what he was saying a lot of the time. Like a lot of the questions were at, like, um, because we're, we can complain about money all day, right? But, and I'm down for it. I'm down to debate all day with somebody that is, is coming with it. But I don't think he was coming with the, like the, the like capitalism is going to cure all. I think he really is. The thing I'm really highlighting is it's like, it's behavior. It's not the behavior of money. Money don't got no behavior. Money's intangible. It's, it's the human that has the behavior Correct. and that's and that's i think that's what he's trying to like uh pitch the most and for what it is and what you're talking about what you're bringing up in this reality in this world i really vibe with that in a sense of because i'm kind of hippy dippy with that too which is like um I, I i guess the big one that's eye-opening to me the thing that's like this hard pill for me to swallow is that money is like water or any other resource so I, I like I don't get like I kind of take things personally with money because of all, all the blood on his hands you know money does this money does that race race blah 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 but I don't think about the same thing with with water I don't get mad at water for that so I, I guess I'm trying to swallow that peel of money is in that same category of it's not something to really hold a grudge against because I gotta have it to to live with and I think that's what you're trying to say with the behavior of it. That's my aha moment of what you're coming here for. Uh, I think um, so. But... I think fine. You've absolutely nailed it. And it's like, how do you make money a friend, not an enemy? Yeah, yeah. I don't like money, but I can't do nothing about it, right? Uh, so what you're saying is my behavior towards this thing. And I, and I, again, I vibe with it. And I think that it also, I can see from just hearing you talk that it makes me want to understand money a little bit more which also makes me probably understand how to change money because then i'll be educated in it so a lot of these questions that brandon and grandpa have and probably myself um will be answered because i'll be more educated probably on it because i know it's a part like i don't know but i, I that's kind of what i've been taking notes about is just kind of like really just I, i'm still having a hard time swallowing that feel I, I still think that money is something that humans made and and but it, it doesn't matter if we made it because it's, it's so entrenched in everything that we do. And I, uh, I think that's what I've been kind of mulling over the most is kind of like dealing with that new information. Yeah. Well, you've got it though. You've understood what I, what my big point is. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. I love the phrase, uh, money, energy or energy of money. Um, because I've never heard it 
termed like that before. And even like reading it on the profile and stuff, I was like, wait, what, what is that? You know, uh, it made me ask myself, like, you know, I, I don't know if it's a term that you coined or what, but, uh, um, yeah, I feel like we don't often think about the relationship of it. It, 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 it It's a term. I mean, there are others out there that talk about the energy of money and that, you know, that money, um, affects us you can you can you can you can feel it uh some will talk to talk about it being in, how it impacts your body and I, I and i think the term money energy itself we have coined and i am you know once i decided to address money consciousness more right that's when i got on to you know the notion that there is both behavior with money in terms of your mindset and what you decide mentally to do with it but there's also the energy of it, how it's in your thoughts and how you let it affect you and affect others. That's, that's what goes with the behavior and that, and the, and the money energy really is, you know, it's a, it's a powerful force that's inside you that's sitting there waiting to be released in some ways for, for good or for bad, you know, across all areas of your life. I think the idea is to, to know how to harness it for the good of your life and the good of others' lives, um, but but if you have negative thoughts about money, and I and I wrote about this not long ago, if you have negative thoughts about money, you probably won't have any money, or you will lose it all. You need to have, you that's where you need to start developing positive thoughts about about money. And and I'm not talking just pray and hope it comes in. I, I I'm I'm really talking about um, looking at a it having a positive constructive use and role in in your in your life and your relationships and 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 in relation to what you do and having meaning and and, and in in your life uh how it can boost your identity not drag down your identity then i think with all of that it, it's it, it can start to come in so you're telling me that root chakra that's got the like that, that's like about money, which I read about. I was like, oh, my, my, my back's been hurting because, you know, money's been an issue. My root chakra, and I'm reading it to it. It's really money the whole yes. way down from the ground. The, the down. bottom three chakras, if you <laughs> want to get to it, fine. The bottom three chakras are heavily affected by money. Um, and, and, and isn't it interesting how many diseases, particularly cancers, are there in the bottom three chakras and, and if they're blocked up with stress? No, no, no. You're. It, I'm, I'm making a joke, but you're also good. You're, you're being true. You're, you're right. You're right. And and so 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 part of it, part of uh, uh, addressing your money energy is addressing is addressing the chakras and where the energy, is, or negative energy, is being held, or where the good energy is. The other big one is your heart. You know, we all look at our heart as a pump, right? To pump blood around our body and oxygen and whatnot. But um, the heart has uh, 5,000 times the power of the brain in terms of the electromagnetic forces that come off it. And more, more signals go up from your heart to your brain than the other way around. So you've got to have a healthy heart that's, in fact, it's got its own brain that you need to feed, feed with the right things. If you are going to uh, have a good mental condition and therefore a men good mental condition about money, so the heart is extremely important. And we sort of talk about it in maybe pay lip service to that or have a good heart towards that person or um, think about, you know, uh, ha have a good attitude. But it's a lot more than that. Finest, you always seem to hit the nail on the head. You seem to be able to, to understand what's going on because I've noticed that every guest that we have on says that you really – understand the subject probably better, better much better than i do i take notes take notes i write it down yeah then I'm, I'm serious like, about that yeah <laughs> well i i, I have found this a, a, an extremely interesting uh conversation with with the three of you and i a, a, and you know of course i haven't met you in person but i would <laughs> probably well not probably would certainly be delighted to meet you in person sometime and we would be able to talk all day. I think, you know, you've asked very interesting, thought-provoking questions and, and really are trying to connect with people on the street 
on on what are some very big issues and and this is making me work and think you know as well because these issues are so big and we need to get to so many people but you but you have but the three of you have understood it you I mean you've asked me different questions and that's because you've had different experiences and perspectives but i i think we've we've unpacked a lot here for the people listening it's been it's been extremely powerful uh i i would say uh for wrapping up the the last or the the one thing that i'm really curious about is this journey like let's say hypothetically i hated uh money or i always have a budget and i never stick to it and i have stress about it and all this stuff like what is what is the the first or the biggest tidbit of advice that you would give me to like start that journey you know so the first thing is i would change the language to make the language less stressful and perhaps call it a spending plan um and i think secondly not talk about goals but maybe just about life desires and get those written out so desires is a much softer word brandon i i, I could probably um you know, I'd want to see your DNA style before I totally guessed who you are, but I think that you're a little more sensitive. And I think if we talked about it in terms of life desires and how you had a spending plan, you would you would be mentally freed up from that. But at the end of the day, you've got to have some savings and financial flexibility to put yourself in that place to be able to take advantage of opportunities. And that's the key thing. Beautiful. That was my last thought. We always do last thoughts on the show. Great. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, finest. Uh, I'll, we'll go finest grandpa and then uh, Sierra, if you're around, and then Hugh. Uh, would love to hear your guys' last thoughts on this. Oh, man. this I appreciate it. This is exactly. Um, I, I thank you, Brandon, for for putting someone about capitalism because I've been a I've been in a stick in the mud about money and capitalism uh, for so long. So and uh, and blessing that uh, you were able to be the person to talk about it because I think this is a, a great bridge point for um, you know could have could have gone a bunch of different ways you know um, and I'm very very happy and very uh, appreciative that I got, got to cross paths with you and, and talk to you and, and hear you out and uh, and thank you. Well, fine. Thank you for understanding at, at, at a very deeper level uh, as well. I appreciate it a lot. Grandpa. Well, Hugh, uh, I enjoyed uh, meeting with you on the podcast. Um, something that you said, I guess, basically at the end, pretty much at the end of this podcast, is the idea that heart, the heart uh, gives more information to the brain than the brain gives the other way around, which I've never thought about that. I never knew there was such a, you know, a, a structure like that. But that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it is interesting. There's a lot of science to that. Um, and I'm still unpacking it. But I know that I have changed people's lives or the, tra the trajectory of, of my own life or relationships from changing my heart to things. And, 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 and now I put that a lot of that in perspective, more and more good things happen. And I think that would be the takeaway comment is to really understand your heart. That's the first place to start uh, um, looking or addressing and getting yourself fit in that area, not only physically, but also the brain inside your heart. Are, are you talking about the physical heart or are you talking about feelings? The physical heart. Physical heart, okay. But the feelings also go with it. Wow. Because the feelings go, up, go, go through the vagus glands up to your brain, so the feelings come with it too. But the physical a... heart's very important. The physical heart, the four, the four uh, chambers of the heart are very important to uh, understand and manage. Awesome. Um, so we'll call it the heart of money, eventually. <laughs> yeah, put the wallet from wallet from my back pocket to my to my chest. Um, this is sorry, I just was really excited because I drew this right before you even got on the show because I was waiting for Brandon to get his shit together. But I was like, I, I quoted and said, "Use your energy for passion." And look what we we're talking about today. That's crazy. Correct. Yeah. Ah. There you go. Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful. Um, hey, uh, Sierra, are you still there? Why do you always ask that? Like, I just wandered away from my I'm computer. Sorry. It could be the moment you went to the bathroom. I don't know. I'm sorry. My God. I put it in chat or something, man. You got me acting like I just leave. <laughs> just turn on and go. Dang. Thank you for coming, Hugh. I, I don't really have a thought. I just have a lot to a lot to chew over. Well, but it was a very interesting discussion. Well, thank you, Sierra, for listening to all of it and 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 for making this show uh, happen. Yeah, um, Hugh, where can people uh, find you and all your links? All give, give us the whole thing. Yeah, so people can find me. Come to our website, dnabehavior.com. Uh, there's a dedicated page in there too on money energy, and there's a white paper in there. Um, there's some discovery tools you can take. You can I can be found on LinkedIn, so Hugh Massey on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, I'm there. Um, I don't do Twitter, but uh, so I can be I can be fairly easily found. Amazing. Um, that's our show, guys. Thank you so much, Hugh. I, I really love this conversation. I'm so glad that you came on, and it was. Uh, very different from almost all of our other podcasts and like very, very helpful and positive for me. Uh, yeah, Grandpa. I just was going to say good night, my friends. Yeah, fine. And <laughs> thank you so much, Sierra. Thank you so much, Grandpa. As always, I love you. We'll see you guys next Brandon, week. thank you. And thanks, everybody. I really enjoyed it. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Podcasting with Grandpa Bart and Rosie Always on his shoulder This is Grandpa and Jill. Grandpa and Jill is brought to you by your hosts, Brandon Fox, Bart Frank, and Finest Jackson. Our producer is Sierra Doss. To watch and listen to full episodes of the show and follow us on social media, visit grandpaandchill.com. That's grandpaandchill.com.